Hello, everybody, and welcome to Deutz H1 2023 results. My name is Christian Ludwig. I'm head of communications and investor relations at Deutz, and I will walk you through our results. But first of all, please have a quick look at our disclaimer, because we have some forward-looking statements in this document will not be updated. I'd like to start with a quick overview of our key operational and strategic developments. New orders came in at almost a 1 billion, slightly down versus the previous year. Unit sales, on the other hand, were up 1.1% for Deutz engines at 91,451 units. Our revenues increased by 10% to more than a billion. And especially positive for us was that our adjusted EBIT increased by almost 20 million to 62.5 million. This equals an EBIT margin of 6.1% and is 1.5 percentage points higher than last year. That led to a strong improvement in our free cash flow, which improved by 33 million year over year, and we're able to post 8.3 million positive free cash flow after six months. With these results, we confirm our guidance for 2023. Revenue should reach approximately 2.1 billion, and the adjusted EBIT margin should be approximately around 5%. Also in the past period, we were able to expand our service network. We can announce two acquisitions, a partner in Chile and also Diesel Motor Nordic, which is in the Nordic states of Europe. And we continue to show progress with our green strategy. Our project pipeline is being added to at all the time. Now we already presented you our dual plus strategy with full year results and gave you an update with our Q1 results too. I'd like to quickly touch base here where we stand today. In the Deutsch Classic business, our margin remains high thanks to success of our performance initiatives. The margin of 8.7% in Q2, where we're able to almost meet the 8.8% we already had in the first quarter. Also, a new logistics concept was established at our headquarters here in Cologne. We had nice progress with the warehouse consolidation. Also, we saw further stabilization of the supply chain and the production processes. And just at the end of July, we successfully started the ramp up of our third shift for the production of sub four liter engines. And that enables us to further roll out our fixed volume program. Approximately 75% of the expanded sub four liter capacity has now been fully booked for the rest of the year. And a quick update on our green progress. As I said before, our project pipeline is being added to it all the time. We have 10 battery electric system projects ongoing with various partners. We have five hydrogen projects ongoing as well. And we signed a letter of intent with a Chinese customer for small scale production run of hydrogen gensets. Overall, we continue to establish and develop new business models and potential partnerships in the segment. For instance, with the automotive supplier Male, we have chosen a partner to develop and supply power cell units for our hydrogen engines when they go into serial production next year. And as stated before, our capital expenditure plans are over a 100 million for the next three years. That all should help us to become emission-free across the entire process chain by no later than 2050. Finally, on the service, also here, we're able to report a very strong first half of the year. Revenues increased by 6.4% to almost 240 million. New orders increased to even above 240 million, leaving us with a book bill of larger than one. We saw a sharp rise in volume of business, particularly for part sales and the Deutsch exchange business. Also, we continue to expand the in-house service network, and also we're able to conclude our two acquisitions, one in South America and the other in Northern Europe, in order to expand our regional presence. And I can tell you that we have further acquisition targets in our pipeline. All in all, we are well on track to achieve our service business 600 million and a revenue target by 2025. Here, a deeper dive on the expansion of our service business in the US, Chile, and Northern Europe. First of all, we opened the ninth Deutsche Service Center, which we call DPC in the US. The overall revenue target for the DPCs is now approximately 50 million for 2023. Also, we signed the agreement to purchase our service partner, M. Hochschild, based in Chile. The expected annual revenue addition from this acquisition is around about 50 million. This transaction was completed at the end of July. And also we acquired Diesel Motor Nordic Group, another distributor of ours. Here we expect to add roughly 10 million on an annual basis for a service revenue. Here the contract was signed at the end of July, closing is expected at a later date of the year. Now let's take a deeper look at some of our numbers. 
kicking off with the new orders. At 990 million, we were at a very strong order intake in the first half of the year. To be true, it was down slightly versus the previous year, but the previous year, of course, was benefited by some very large placements of orders as the supply chain was very difficult and people wanted to ensure that they get delivered. We see still from all regions a fairly positive contribution with the slight exception of Asia Pacific. Here, especially China is weakening. So here we see the strongest decline in order intake going forward. Luckily for us, Asia Pacific and China is our weakest region. So the overall impact is nothing that we're us at the moment. Now let's take a look at the unit sales. Overall, a slight decline of 1.3% driven solely by our torpedo business with the boat drive. Here on the leisure boat side, we see a somewhat lackluster demand at the moment in some, some of the regions. On the Deutsch engine side, we saw an increase of 1.1% to 91,451 units after six months. If you look at our revenue number, the result is even more impressive and we're able to grow this by 10%, which shows you that the price mix effects that we are able to implement still bear fruit. The orders on hand remain at a high level of almost 740 million as of June 30, which gives us 22 weeks of fully loaded capacity for the next months. And I can tell you that the increase in the revenue was attributable to all regions and application segments, as you can see here on the next sheet. On the revenue breakdown by region, especially the Americas with plus 20.4% stand out. The business of the US is booming, mainly due to a very strong demand from the material handling segments, which you can see on the right-hand side. Also in Africa and Middle East, we saw almost 20% growth, but this is of course a smaller market for us. What is also visible is that Asia Pacific is slowing down. It was the region with the weakest growth the first six months. Now let's have a look at the revenue breakdown per application segment. As already stated, material handling, mainly in US business, was by far the strongest with growth of almost 27%. Next in line was the stationary equipment, which also benefits from the oil and gas industry, which was up by more than 17%. Service, as already we talked about, up by 6.4%, and slightly weakening in the construction and agriculture machinery businesses, where we had some weaker order intakes last year already, as we talked about. Even more important for us, although, is the strong improvement in profitability. Here you can see the adjusted EBIT margin, adjusted EBIT development over the last six quarters. With Q1 and Q2, we are two quarters back to back with adjusted EBIT margin of north of 6%. So after six months, the adjusted EBIT improved to 62.5 million, driven by the economies of scale, thanks to increased business, positive product mix effects, the market oriented pricing policy, and the expansion of the service business. The EBIT margin after six months before exceptional items increased to 6.1%, up 1.5 percentage points year over year. And this is also well reflected in our EPS for exceptional items at 36 euro cents, another strong improvement versus the 28% we showed last year. Overall, we can say that the implementation of our market oriented pricing policy and the performance initiatives continue to bear fruit. Now let's look at some KPIs and balance sheet figures. Starting with our R&D spending. As you can see, we only increased R&D spending slightly, so the R&D ratio came even down. We can keep this fairly stable in the current business environment. A different picture on the capital expenditure, but here, where we talked about this in Q1, there's one special effect. With a deal we made with Daimler Truck to acquire two of their engine platforms, we acquired IP and license rights. This cost us more than 50 million, which is already included in our CapEx for the first half of the year. If you adjust for that, we're basically flat with our capital expenditures. Finally, on the working capital side, here also, solid growth of 10.8%. The reason is twofold. First of all, we build up inventories resulting from measures to save on production. And also, with the rearrangement of a logistics center in Cologne, this also led to some inefficiencies which led to build up in inventory. We worked through a lot of that already during the second half of Q2. We'll still see some improvements in the course of Q3 and Q4. Now let's have a quick look at cash flow and our net financial position. Due to the strong results, no surprise, we saw improvement of more than 34 million in our cash flow from operating activities. This is also reflected in our free cash flow development, 
which was up by 33 million to a positive 8.3 million. On the net financial position, you see a slight decline despite the positive free cash flow. This is due to the dividend that we paid in the course of Q2. Also on our balance sheet, we have solid KPIs. Equity ratio stood at 44.6% at the end of June. We have unused lines of credit totaling around 180 million available. Short term, we only need to refinance 75 million. The most of our credit lines are long term. So our funding is sufficient to finance the company's transformation going forward. This brings me to the full year guidance for 2023. Already with Q1 results, we told you that we were able to become a little bit more concrete with the guidance ranges that we gave here in March. We're now looking to sell about 195,000 Deutsch engines this year. This should lead to revenues of approximately 2.1 billion and an adjusted EBIT margin of around 5%. Our free cash flow should come in the mid double digit million euro amount. And we also can confirm the medium term targets based on our dual plus strategy. For 2025, we're looking at revenue of more than 2.5 billion. The service share of our revenue should be around 600 million. And we're looking for an adjusted EBIT margin between 6 and 7%. That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. Should you have any questions, please give the IR department at Deutsche a call or send us an email. We'll be happy to help you. And also a short reminder, on September 12th, we will hold our Capital Market Day here in Cologne. It's going to be an exciting program. If you have not received an invitation, also please contact us. We'll be happy to accommodate you. Thank you, CD11A, for having us. Have a great day and talk to you soon. Goodbye.